Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for another GPU pricing update. Lots to get to in this month's episode with some discussion of NVIDIA's upcoming GeForce 40 Super Series, a look at pricing for current generation GPUs and what sort of deals you should be looking out for during Black Friday, and a few interesting observations about the used market. Before we get to that, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their new Nexode 100 watt MagSafe charger. This compact premium desktop charger provides an array of charging options with 15 watt wireless charging provided on the top of the device, three USB ports and an impressive 100 watt output from a single USB type C port. The 100 watt MagSafe charger also features GAN technology which prevents battery degradation with effective temperature management. Then for those of you on the go, Ugreen's 25,000 milliamp hour, 145 watt power bank has enough power to fully charge your smartphone six times with support for fast laptop charging and includes a smart digital display. Ugreen's bi-directional charging technology allows the power bank to be fast charged to 100% within two hours by using a 65 watt PD charger while also fast charging connected devices. These Ugreen products are compatible with a huge range of devices, so for more information and excellent Black Friday deals for up to 50% off, please check the links in the video description. So first up, there are strong rumors at the moment surrounding NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 40 Super Series graphics cards, which are expected to be unveiled at CES in January of 2024. We haven't heard heaps about these new products, but it does seem likely that NVIDIA will unveil a refreshed lineup in the new year at their CES special address, which does have some implications for prospective buyers of existing cards in the upper parts of the range. For example, should you buy an RTX 4080 right now, or wait for an RTX 4080 Super? Currently, the expectation is that the Super Series will include three graphics cards, the RTX 4080 Super, the terribly named RTX 4070 Ti Super, and the RTX 4070 Super. These are not expected to be revolutionary upgrades, but minor improvements to performance alongside a potential price adjustment to better fit with the current market. You should take the following specifications with a grain of salt as nothing has been confirmed at this stage, but rumours are suggesting the RTX 4080 Super will feature the same AD103 GPU as the RTX 4080, just with a full core configuration of 80 SMs and 10,024 CUDA cores. The RTX 4080 features 76 SMs, so this would be a 5% increase in core configuration. As AD103 uses a 256-bit memory interface, it's unlikely we'd see any adjustments to VRAM, meaning we're probably going to see a repeat of 16GB of GDDR6X here, though clock speeds for both the core and memory are up in the air. In any case, this looks pretty similar to the RTX 2080 Super back in the day, which was a minor spec bump over the RTX 2080. The RTX 4070 Super is expected to do something pretty similar, increase the core configuration of the RTX 4070 while maintaining most other aspects of the design. Rumors are suggesting an uplift from 46 to 56 SMs, sitting just below the 60 SMs of the RTX 4070 Ti. This would be a rather substantial 22% CUDA core increase, although we'd still be looking at just 12GB of GDDR6X memory on a 192-bit bus. In our testing, the RTX 4070 Ti is around 25% faster at 4K than the 4070, so the new supermodel would look to close the gap there and almost end up as a slightly slower replacement for the 4070 Ti. The most significant upgrade is being suggested via rumors for the RTX 4070 Ti Super, a bizarrely named but honestly much needed graphics card given the underwhelming configuration of the 4070 Ti. It's being suggested the 4070 Ti Super will move to AD103, up from AD104, giving access to a 256-bit memory bus and 16GB of GDDR6X, a much-needed improvement over the 12GB VRAM configuration the $800 4070 Ti shipped with. It would be a cut-down version of AD103, currently expected at 66 SMs, down from 76 on the RTX 4080, but we'd be looking at a 10% increase in CUDA cores on the 4070 Ti, along with more memory and higher memory bandwidth. The most important aspects to these products will be the prices, especially the RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti launched with poor pricing. NVIDIA has a chance to correct things here, although we don't have any great insight into what these products will end up costing. Given relatively weak sales of the 4080 and the minor expected uplift for the supermodel, I'd be expecting the 4080 Super to drop to more like $1,000 US, allowing it to better compete with the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, which is typically priced around $950 and offers similar performance to the current 4080 in rasterization. 
The RTX 4070 Ti Super has the potential to be around 15% faster with more VRAM compared to the 4070 Ti if rumors are to be believed, so a relaunch at a similar price would make sense. The nearest competition from AMD is the Radeon RX 7900 XT, which is typically priced between $750 and $800 US and offers similar overall performance as seen in our 50 game benchmark. At $800, the 4070 Ti Super would offer a more appropriate level of VRAM in this price tier and deliver very competitive performance. Meanwhile, for the RTX 4070 Super, this card is likely to receive a decent performance uplift relative to the 4070 and close the gap to the 4070 Ti. Nvidia has already dropped the 4070 to between $500 and $550 over the last few months in response to the Radeon RX 7800 XT, so it would make sense for the new model to debut at the original MSRP of the 4070, so $600 US. These are all just guesses on my part, assessing the rumored specifications, current market positioning of other models, and how Nvidia likes to price graphics cards. The actual pricing note is unknown and we just won't find out until launch as these things can change just days ahead of the announcement. With this in mind, there's the question of whether you should purchase an RTX 4080 or 4070 series graphics card now or wait for the new supermodels. In my opinion, unless you get an extremely good deal on one of these cards during Black Friday, I would wait. The RTX 4080, for example, is $1,100 US at the moment. That's no different to what we've seen over the last six months, and I just wouldn't consider that model unless it was a decent amount below $1,000 to counteract the potential of a $1,000 RTX 4080 Super. The RTX 4070 Ti is very difficult to recommend and would very much be a wait and see what the 4070 Ti Super brings sort of situation. The low amount of VRAM and still reasonably high price, around $740 US at the moment, just isn't very tempting. Again, unless that was much lower, I'd wait for January. There's a decent possibility you will get a better product at a similar price, or will be able to grab the RTX 4070 Super for something similar at a lower price. The RTX 4070 is probably the best of the three to grab right now, but even then I wouldn't want to pay more than $500 US for it considering the current market. If you see a Black Friday flash sale below $500, that would be a decent position, otherwise I don't think there will be much harm in waiting a little over a month to see what Nvidia has in store at CES 2024. As for the rest of Nvidia's lineup, pricing is coming down for some models across Black Friday, but it's important to be on the lookout for genuine deals as opposed to mere price adjustments. For example, the RTX 4060 has been listed at $290 as a Black Friday deal on Newegg, but the lowest price for this model across the six months prior to November has been $280, so that's not really a deal at all. However, cards like the 4070 Ti, 4070 and 4060 Ti have all received respectable discounts and now sit at their lowest prices. With that said, I don't think many of these discounts are currently what I'd class as a great deal based on various factors like performance, capabilities, competition and upcoming products. A great deal on the RTX 4060 would be $240, given you can currently purchase the slightly slower Radeon RX 6650 XT for just $220 US. Current deals of $290 just don't do it for me, and this affects what I would class as a deal for the 4060 Ti as well. The RTX 4070 is getting pretty close though, again below $500 would be decent. The RTX 4090 is currently experiencing a shortage due to upcoming sales restrictions into China, so these cards are priced well above MSRP if you can even find one. If you do manage to snag one at MSRP, that would be a great deal. For the Radeon RX 7000 series, there are a few models currently discounted to their lowest price across the last six months, such as the Radeon RX 7900 XTX at $910 US. That's a good price, but it's not even a 10% discount over the MSRP from a year ago, so a great deal would have to be lower than that in my opinion. Like with the RTX 4070 Ti, I also believe a suitable price for the 7900 XT would be about $650 given impending launches and other factors. With AMD's mid-range models, the 7800 XT is currently not discounted at all, and it was only recently released, so a minimum 10% discount would be reasonable if you're looking for a deal. The RX 7700 XT is around 16% slower than the 7800 XT at 1440p, so its horrible MSRP of $450 should be more like $420 to begin with, and then a discount down to $370 on top of that is where I'd get interested relative to current 7800 XT pricing. 
This is also because the RX 6800 can be currently had for just $380, which is a similar performing GPU with more VRAM. So the 7700 XT would have to slot in below that to make any sense in the current deals market. Then there's the RX 7600. $240 isn't a bad deal, but given pricing for some RDNA 2 models, I'd like to see a further $10 shaved off, especially as $240 is only $10 lower than last month's price. There's also Intel Arc GPUs, which haven't been discounted compared to last month as of yet, but with a small price drop, something like the A750, if it got to around $200, that would be some pretty serious compelling value. There are still older series graphics cards on the market as well, so let's see what is happening with the GeForce 30 series. Four of the five models available have hit new low prices at this point in November, the exception being the RTX 3070, but the level to which these are deals is questionable. The RTX 3050 is just $10 lower than last month, which is hardly a special Black Friday deal, and it's just not a very fast product either, coming in 20% slower than the Radeon RX 6600, which has regularly been seen around $180 US. I couldn't recommend this model above $140, so there's still a fair bit of discounting necessary there. The RTX 3060 is also at a new low of $250, but again, with Radeon competition, I think a great deal on this card would be more around $210. The 3060 Ti is pretty close to a great deal right now, priced at just $300 US, matching the price of the 6700 XT, which offers similar performance, though admittedly more VRAM. It's also a little slower on average than the 4060 Ti 8GB, which is currently a $330 product, so if you could grab it for, say, $280, I think that would be pretty great. At $400, the RTX 3070 simply makes no sense and isn't a deal considering the lowest price over the last six months has been $370 with several other months around $380. But with the 6700 XT at $300 and the slightly slower 4060 Ti 8GB at $330, I couldn't justify much more than $310 as a great deal. So right now, 3070s are impossible to recommend. The 3070 Ti is also too expensive, even though $400 is a new low for that card. Given Radeon and RTX 40 series pricing, that should be lower to count as a great deal. A lot of AMD's RDNA 2 line is very well priced at the moment, so it's hard to say what qualifies as a great deal for these graphics cards. Some of them are the best value GPUs at the moment on a cost per frame basis, so in that sense they are already great value. However, some models are currently on Black Friday sales that aren't all that different to pricing we've seen over the last six months. So from that perspective, you aren't really getting a deal right now. I think it's totally fair to expect a deal to be at least 10% below the historic lowest price during a big sales period. So how much you factor in the cards already being great value, I guess, will come down to how you see the data and value in these products. But basically here, I've looked at the RX 6600 as the baseline metric for a great value card at the moment. This GPU has consistently been at the top of our current price cost per frame charts. And if you can grab one for $180 right now, I still believe that's a great deal. The 6650 XT is also looking very nice at the moment, priced at $220, offering similar performance to the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 at a $70 and $20 lower price respectively. It's not that much lower than its historic lowest price, but it's still a good buy. Then we have the 6700 XT, which around this $300 mark is a great buy right now, though again the historic low for this type of GPU is $310, so it's not exactly worlds cheaper. Still, that's a competitive price up against the RTX 4060 Ti and RTX 3060 Ti. Also at a competitive price is the RX 6800, $20 lower than its historic low at Newegg based on our data. Great value up against other products, that is a genuine great deal. The RX 6950 XT also isn't too bad at $590, though not amazing. So across all of those new GPU series at Newegg, again, I think it's important to be on the lookout for a real Black Friday level discount as opposed to a small price reduction or an advertised deal that isn't really a deal at all. There's a few of those right now. Some cards are genuinely at their historic lowest price and might hit flash sales to get them to a new lowest price. Others are merely returning to a similar position to where they were at several months ago, so don't really constitute as a deal. For higher-end buyers in that $600 plus price range, I'd really be encouraging you to wait and see what we get from NVIDIA's Super Series before jumping in, unless you see a really great deal. Most of what I've seen so far have only been modest discounts that haven't really brought these GPUs to exciting new lows. Of course, we are still days away from actual Black Friday the day, but some of these are listed as Black Friday prices. 
a lower price is required to mitigate the chance of missing out on something better come January, which really isn't that far away. For mid-range shoppers, I'd be looking at the RTX 4070, especially if it drops below $500, along with the RX 6800 and RX 6700 XT. A few of the other cards around this price, especially the RTX 4060 Ti series and RX 7700 XT, have been discounted compared to their MSRPs, but not discounted enough to be a genuine great deal, as they're some of the weakest products in the current generation, especially with their MSRPs. For lower end shoppers, NVIDIA options are typically overpriced whether you're thinking about an RTX 4060, RTX 3060, or especially the RTX 3050. We'd need to see some real Black Friday deals to make those worth buying, not just a $10 discount below MSRP. Instead, I'd be looking at the RX 6600 and RX 6650 XT as the primary best choices around that $200 mark. Also make a brief mention of the used market here. Generally comparing this month to last month, I saw a small price increase on the used market, nothing drastic, and it did depend on the exact graphics card I looked at, but we aren't seeing much price movement here yet in response to deals for new GPUs. That's pretty typical during this period, so if you are thinking of buying used, make sure you also check current new pricing, not just for the model you're looking at, but also newer models that offer a similar level of performance. In many cases, I just don't think it's worth getting a 15% discount to grab a GPU that's been used for many years, which is the case with some of these variants. Anyway, that's it for this GPU pricing update for November of 2023. Not expecting too much else to be happening throughout the rest of this year, so I guess our December update probably won't be too exciting. But yeah, hopefully this has been a sort of look at what prices you should be assessing at Black Friday as to whether you're getting a deal or not getting a deal. If you do see those prices, or even better, lower than the prices we've been talking about in this video, yeah, I think you're getting a pretty reasonable deal on those GPUs, but I'm not holding my breath for some of those discounts. They are pretty significant over their current position. If you do appreciate these videos, please do consider subscribing to Hardware Unboxed, giving the video a like, and supporting us directly via our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below, and you'll get access to some cool benefits like our Discord community, our monthly live stream, which will be coming up pretty soon, I think, at this point. So yeah, good time to get in on that. And yeah, plenty of other good stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.